Well, it's not exactly how you want to see your freshly built wood gas truck. So, well, if you remember over on the Drive On Wood Forum, you already know what I what I got going on here. Um, so these V10s, um, I really like them. There, there's lots of good things about them. I mean, horsepower, torque. Uh, with the OBD2 computer, now recently the ability to tune them. But I have this innate ability to break anything. <coughs> so, what I got going on here. Uh, a while ago I did a video talking about breaking off one of the uh, rocker assemblies. Um, it's kind of a notorious thing I've actually found out that these trucks do. And it's a combination of things that causes it. Um, one problem mainly is that up until 1998 they used a 516 bolt for the rockers. They realized that this was a problem in the later trucks up until 2003. They upgraded the heads to a 3 8 bolt. Uh, then they quit breaking the rockers. Then they had a problem with uh, bending push rods. So what happens with these, and, and I don't specifically know why this is an issue, apparently VTANs are just not well maintained. People don't do regular maintenance on them. And it, it's kind of dumb, but anyways, however it happens, lack of maintenance, these engines will sludge and they do it badly. Uh, when I broke the rocker bolt off and I had my valve covers off, I noticed that in the heads, this engine is sludged really bad. Uh, I put a half quart of uh, Marble Mr. Motor Oil in it, hoping to get some of that sludge broken up so I can get it out of the mill. And I put about another thousand miles on it, uh, probably about 4,000 miles worth of wood gas use and about a thousand miles worth of gasoline because I can't keep up with the wood supply. I've talked about that before with this truck. Um, and that amount of mileage was not enough for the marble to be able to break down all the sludge that's in this mill. And the problem was when these sludge up, um, in the Magnum series of engines, they used a combination hydraulic and roller lifter assembly. It's a roller on the camshaft bottom end, but there's still a hydraulic section in the top that relies on oil pressure to keep the lifter pumped up and keep your valves within their spec of adjustment. Well, the problem with that is that when they sludge, um, the lifters can get sludge inside of them. And what that will do is the lifter is designed to have a certain amount of squish to take up any tolerances, you know, some amount of preload. And when they get sludge, that sludge cannot compress like regular oil would and it will basically make the valve over travel. And your weak point normally in the earlier engines is that 5 16 rocker bolt, she snaps off. Um, in the later trucks, like I said, it went into bending push rods. Well, the weakest link is either gonna be the bolt or the push rod. Because that lifter can't compress, it's gonna find the next weakest link. And because these aren't an interference uh, engine, uh, let's say if you broke a timing chain, you're not going to crash a valve into a piston. The interference comes in with the push rod over traveling and then over traveling the rocker, and either the push rod or the rocker is going to let go. I already had one break. I know this engine is sludge, and I was driving it into work <coughs> a couple days ago, and uh, I started getting a, another misfire, and now I've got rattling noise in the top end again, so I'm pretty sure she broke another rocker bolt. Uh, or potentially damage the lifter, maybe bent the push rod. Not entirely certain, but I've got bigger problems than that with this truck, is that this being an OBD2 computer and my 94 parts truck, uh, OBD1, this computer has been crapping out since I got the truck, and it's failed in a multitude of ways, and Dodges are in my experience, in my area, I've replaced a lot of Dodge ECMs, or they call it a PCM, so it's a powertrain control module instead of strictly an engine control module. <coughs> I've replaced them in half-ton V8s, 
half-ton V6s. Um, when I was working in an automotive shop before, I have replaced them on the V10s. I have replaced them in uh, 318 and 360 Dakotas. I have replaced them in the 2.4 liter uh, Neons, the 2.4 liter PT Cruisers. This is, for my experience, a fairly common failure. Now, because it's a PCM and it controls everything in the truck versus other manufacturers that have an ECM, a transmission control module, an ABS control module, all these different computers controlling individual things, these control everything. When one thing fails, it can screw up multiple systems. The first failure I had with this computer, um, the computer provides ground signal to the fuel pump relay and it quit providing that signal. That's why even before I would gas this truck, I ended up having to run my own ground wire to the flip switch in the dash to turn the fuel pump on and off. That was the first failure I had. The second failure I had happened uh, probably three or four weeks ago, driving down the road, and I went to go kick in my cruise control, check engine light came on, and I had no cruise. Ran the codes, came back as a vehicle speed sensor. Well. Because the vehicle speed sensor controls both your cruise, your idle quality, um, and your uh, gauge cluster, if any one of those is working, it means the PCM is getting signal from the vehicle speed sensor, but it's not sending it out to the rest of the truck that is looking for that signal. Now, because my speedometer was still functioning perfectly, I know the vehicle speed sensor is working, but the computer is not sending that signal out to let the cruise control function. More of a problem than that, that helps with idle quality massively. The truck wouldn't idle anymore. It would just, if you let off the throttle, it's gonna die. And I'd have to restart it every time I came to a stop. If I pushed the clutch in for too long, it would shut off. So I've got two different failures in that ECM already. And then I have uh, an intermittent failure where it was killing power to the front coil pack which would actually kill four cylinders at once. And usually I could pull the truck over, hook up my scanner, clear the code, and it would come back for a little while. Now it's so intermittent, the truck's no longer driving. So, long story short, um, the ECM is junk. I'm having problems with the sludge in this engine. So this motor's gonna come out. We're gonna swap in the engine out of my 94 with the complete wire harness. We're gonna convert this truck back to OBD-1. I don't necessarily want to do that because I didn't even get a chance with the OBD-2 system to start tuning this engine and see what kind of performance I could really get out of it on wood gas. But the computer is not available. I have searched high and low. There's not a wrecking yard around me that has one. I found two P10s in a wrecking yard, both of them OBD-2 trucks, both of them the computer is gone. Um, I've looked all over the internet and the only ones you can find are 600 plus bucks and they're used, they're on eBay, and they're a no guarantee. I know for an absolute fact my 94 ran like a rave day. So, this sludged up mill is coming out. We're going to clean up the 94 engine, dump it in here. I already had the engine out of the 94 um, when this truck started frustrating me. I got a little carry away in pulling the motor out of the green truck. I broke a valve cover because these things are very, very tight in and out. Um, broke something else on it, I don't remember. Nothing terribly important. Basically, I had that thing hooked up to a forklift and uh, I got impatient and it came out at a higher rate of velocity than I wanted it to. Sometimes I get a little angry when I'm working on handles. So, Take a little bit more time to pull this engine out. And uh, something that's a little bit annoying about the V10s, um, the way these trucks are engineered, you see there's like a foot and a half that the cowl covers in the back. Well, to pull this engine out, they say that you're supposed to unbolt the core support, pull it out of the way like I have here. You're also supposed to unbolt the front cab bolts and tilt the cab back to get the engine out. I did figure out on the other truck, you can get away with pulling the intake manifold. Um, there's no good way to put a chain anywhere on this engine because they don't have any factory lifting points. So to pull this one, I'm going to build a plate that bolts down where the upper intake plenum was. Uh, should be able to balance it and get it out much easier. A little trick to getting them out. 
do not pull out the cross bolts in the motor mount. Loosen them and then pull out the bolts that mount the motor mount to the block. Leave the motor mounts in the frame rail and the engine will come out much easier. So the last couple things I need to do on this one, um, I need to disconnect my fuel line, motor mounts, head bolts, and bell housing bolts, and then rip the wire harness with it, which is not hard at all because I already have it disconnected here. I need to disconnect my um, O2 sensor and disconnect the main harness over here on this side, and it will all come out with the mill. And I got this water on it last night. Um, hopefully I'll have this engine out today. I'm gonna bring in the 94's engine and get it cleaned up to see if there's you know any gaskets or anything I need to replace on it uh, before we stuff it in here. And I think eventually, when I have more time in my hands, I wanna go through this engine. I wanna clean out the lifters, check to make sure the cam's okay, check the push rods. Maybe look into some higher compression pistons and a light rebuild. <coughs> Push this thing up into the horsepower a little bit more. Uh, make, make it more usable for wood gas and maybe swap it back in this truck. I don't know at this time. I just need to get an engine back in this truck and get it back on the road because it's my tow vehicle. We're in winter right now, but uh, pretty quick here. It's gonna be springtime and fishing season starts and this truck tows my boat. So I need to get this guy back on the road. So I'm going to get to ripping and tearing. Probably the next thing you guys are going to see is this engine coming out. Man, look at all that room for activities. That engine bay is massive. And that V10 sits way back in there. <coughs> I just took my uh, carburetor lifting plate for regular carbureted engines. Redrilled a, a three bolt pattern in it, bolted it down in the middle. Um, I knew it was going to have to come nose out, but not too big a deal. Just put it on the front eyelet there and out she comes. I wouldn't say it's my best idea ever, but engine on a hand truck. Well, it's handy to move around the shop. And here's the middle out of the green truck. Got it up on the engine stand, which was a nightmare. I think it took me longer to get this engine bolted onto this engine stand <coughs> than it did to pull the other motor. Um, this head system is not designed for a bell housing that is this wide. These are completely extended out both ways. Um, I actually had to take these two bolts out of the bottom, remove the arms, Take the head over to the drill press and hog out this hole one more size so that the bolts had enough slack to pull sideways and be able to get those two bolts in there. So I'm going to strip a whole bunch of stuff off this engine to lighten it up because I, I literally cannot wheel this thing around. If I wanted to move it, I'd have to still move it with a forklift. So I'm going to get the front end of this thing stripped off, probably get a pressure wash, then we'll get it inside the shop and uh, see where we're going. Thanks for watching, guys.